This is the 11th month update with my Ionic 5. Let's start with some highlights. Number one, it's actually been really reliable. Now I know I've posted a ton of videos where I talked about issues with the car, but that's mostly having to do with fit and finish, with parts supply, with servicing, but not really anything to do with the car's actual reliability because my Ionic 5 has been truly reliable. Now there are owners out there who have had issues with stuff like the 12 volt battery, with the charge port, with the heater, but mine, it's been solid. Day in and day out, we get in, it starts right up. Doesn't matter how hot it is, doesn't matter how cold it is, the heating and the AC always work, and we haven't had any issues with charging. So on that front, the Ionic 5 has been extremely reliable for us over the past 11 months. The next highlight is actually the heating system. That's right, I think it deserves a category of its own. It's been that good. Now, on typical mornings, if this car is parked outside, then I'll preheat the cabin uh, for about three to four minutes, just so when my son climbs in, he's nice and toasty. And it always is nice and toasty. In fact, it's usually too hot by that point. And my son, he's able to sit in here without a jacket, perfectly fine. And then on weekends, if it's just myself doing a quick errand, I don't even bother doing the remote start because I know as soon as I turn this car on, the heater is going to kick on and it'll be warm and toasty within a minute or two. It's that fast. In fact, I actually wonder if maybe this heating system is too strong for this car because I've never even gotten close to maxing it out. We usually set it to 70, you know, if it gets a little cold, 71, 72, and then we put it on auto fan level one, maybe auto fan level two if it gets cold but then it gets too hot and I'll push it back down to fan level one. Seriously, this system is just that fast. It's the best, it's the fastest, it's the strongest system I've ever had in a car. And if you have a GV60 or an EV6, those should be the same. They should work really well in those cars as well. The next highlight is how this car looks. And after 11 months, this thing still gets looks, even from me. You know, every time I look at it, I'm just thinking, man, I can't believe they really made this thing look this crazy, crazy good. We still get looks from other people. We still get thumbs ups, we still get comments. And it's crazy because for me, it's been 11 months. But for other people, when they see me driving this car, it still might be their very first time ever seeing an Ionic 5 and that shows when you know they just stare at me going by or something like that. My son who just turned three he's getting really into cars and I can't wait until he's driving age. When he's 16 I'm gonna pull up some videos and photos and show him hey we used to have an Ionic 5 and I bet by that point he'll be like wait what we had an Ionic 5 why didn't you keep it for me? I feel like this design is so crazy that it's going to be remembered for a long time. The next highlight is preconditioning. That's right, we finally got battery preconditioning as an update. Um, it's kind of a love-hate relationship for a lot of people. For some, it's been working fantastically and they're just so happy that it finally happened for our Ionic 5s in the United States. Others are saying, ah, they don't like the implementation. They wish there was an on or off button to make it easier. And then there's this last group who's really disappointed with how this new battery preconditioning update has changed how eco mode drives now. Now, if you weren't aware, after getting the battery conditioning update for Ionic 5s in the US, it has changed eco mode to the point now where it's extremely slow. I don't have exact numbers, but before the update, you're looking at a zero to 60 time probably in the mid seven seconds. I'm going to be doing some testing once I get mine done. Mine's going in on January 13th. Then I'll do some testing and give you guys some numbers. I have an idea of what's happening, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see, look out for that video. But anyways, I'm just happy that Hyundai has been actively working to make our cars better. 
meaning they pushed out the battery conditioning update. And now that there's issues with the update, they're going to continue to work to make sure our cars are better. And the last highlight is actually charging at home. This is a benefit of EV ownership that I have not experienced over the past 11 months. Because for the past 11 months, I've been using Electrify America as my only way of charging. So that means from February to about end of November, every time I needed to charge the car, I would take it to my local Electrify America station, which luckily is only a mile away. So the Ionic 5, if you weren't aware, has two years of free Electrify America charging. And then when we bought our Genesis GV60, well, that came with three years of free Electrify America charging. And same thing. Anytime we needed to charge, I would take it to my Electrify America station and charge it. And we've been doing that for months now. Well, then in November, Electron sent me their VBOX 48 for testing. And we finally got that installed in December. But also in November, at the end of it, I ruptured my Achilles. So I wasn't really getting around well. And at that point, I was the only one that was really charging the cars. So it really made sense. And it was super, super perfect timing that we got level two charging station installed so that I could do all the charging at home. Now, my wife and I typically drive about 150 to 200 miles a week per vehicle. So normally that means about one charging session at EA per week. But in the winter, you know, things charge a little slower. Sometimes the range goes down and that might mean charging twice per week per vehicle. So that's up to four sessions that I would have to manage during a week out in the cold, out in the rain, out in the snow. But I don't have to do that anymore. No. Now I can just plug in when I get home. Or sometimes in the evening, I check the charge percentage in the app and I'm like, oh, I need to charge the car. Well, I can come down to my pajamas and just plug in the car. The convenience of being able to charge at home is truly something that, you know, I can't say enough about. Now, on to the lowlights. We did have a minor app glitch. Has to do with the vehicle locator. Um, it stopped working around Christmas, New Year's for about a week. The weird thing is it also stopped working on my Genesis app for my GV60. On top of the locator feature, we also weren't able to use the on-demand photos, the maps, stuff like that. I feel like it was some kind of app or map update, but it would have been nice if they told us that it was happening. Currently, the Hyundai app is fully operational. My Genesis app, on the other hand, is still glitching a little bit. Low light number two is that we are still dealing with our Ionic 5 headliner issue. Now, if you haven't followed some of my earlier videos about repairs, our glass roof got replaced. And when it got replaced, the repair shop accidentally ripped part of the headliner. And then they also kind of left some stains all over it. When the car went in, it had a brand new headliner. It was perfect. No rips, no stains, nothing. And my expectation was that I would be getting the car back in that condition. Now, our whole repair journey insurance claim thing is a mess. This portion of the claim got outsourced to a third party company called Sunroof Express. And they became our claim handler for this portion of the claim. They said, well, we have cleared our responsibility. We've replaced the glass roof and the body shop tried to fix your headliner. So we feel like we've done everything we need to do. I don't think you want a collision repair shop doing fabric or upholstery repair. That's not their specialty. I went into the shop with a perfect headliner and I came out with one that's damaged and one that's not clean. So I've reached out to my own state farm rep and they said, okay, well get some numbers together. I'll present it to the higher ups and we'll see what happens. So I reached out to Burns, Hyundai and Cherry Hill. They've been my primary servicing dealer for my Ionic 5. And ever since I found them, the experience has actually been really good. And they say, yeah, we can't fix Highlander and we can replace it. And they showed me the cost and I was like, wow. So the cost to replace this headliner is $3,700. So number one, be careful with your headliner. Number two, I learned something interesting though. 
the dealership said, yeah, we don't typically do glass replacements. That gets outsourced to other companies. But typically what happens is that they bring the car back to us and they say, hey, remove the headliner for us. We send the car back to them. They change out the glass. They bring it back to us. We reinstall the headliner and then it's done. And then I was thinking, wait a minute. So you're telling me that that's what typically is supposed to happen, that they should have removed the headliner. And all of a sudden that light bulb went off in my head like, huh, that's not what happened for my Ionic 5. So Sunroof Express's recommended repair shop replaced my glass roof, but they never removed the headliner, which apparently should have been standard procedure. So now I feel like, well, if they had followed proper standard procedure, they would have removed the headliner. That way, nothing would have gotten damaged. And when it was all said and done, they would have had a perfectly clean and not ripped headliner to begin with. So we're in the process of still chasing them down and trying to figure this all out. The crazy part is this glass roof cracked in August of 2022. It's currently January of 2023, and we're still dealing with the aftermath of that whole thing. So that's definitely a low light. Well, just the other evening, I was taking some photos of the headliner so that I could send it to State Farm, who was going to escalate this claim. But while doing that, I realized that there was actually a lot more damage and a lot more staining than I had originally noticed. I guess just being able to shine a light and have it reflect off the glass roof showed me a whole bunch of things that I had not caught before. So now, along with the headliner, we're also talking about damage to the material covering the sunroof shade. And there's just some other weird stuff going on that I'm not really sure about. Well, since sending these new photos to Sunroof Express, they have taken responsibility for it and are sending this for authorization. I just have to get back to the dealership so that they can thoroughly review what in the world is going on with this upper half of my car so that we can get a proper estimate. But that's it. There's no other low lights. Like I said before, the Ionic 5 for us has actually been extremely reliable. And most owners as well will tell you that theirs have also been extremely reliable. Now, what's coming up? Well, we have a 12 month update coming up. That's right, one whole year with the car. And during that update, I'm gonna go over the seats, go over the paint, the maintenance costs, everything. So make sure you subscribe, that way you'll get the notification when the video comes out. I also have a bunch of stuff that I'm planning to do, like my GV60. We're coming up on six months with that one. There will be an update video. There's also going to be a Genesis GV60 versus Ionic 5 head-to-head. -head. That one's taken a while, but I think we're almost ready. Hopefully a lot of interesting content for you guys soon. Anyways, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Subscribing will help grow our channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.